your dad. What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to our Friday night signature. As you can see, my wife bought a brand new living room set. So um, I never really wanted to brag and show you guys. You notice I have a tie on for tonight. I did this for our, our group and for our special guest. You know, um, he's going to get his special introduction in a second because I was going to really go all out and put the button down on with the sports jacket, but all uh, disclosure, my wife said, please get out of the house. You're, you're, ruined. you're making everything a mess in the house. And I turned everything upside down anyway. So I hope, Sally, I know you're laughing your ass off. I got to tie you on because I'm with Jimmy. You never know. We might have to go somewhere. He might say something's got to get I don't know if he's coming out of retirement. I don't know. I got to be dressed right. So in the closet, if I got to throw a shirt and a sports jacket on, I'm good to go. In the meantime, before I bring in the man that's too, too too sweet to be sour, limousine riding, high flying, always profiling, and then always styling, jet flying. Jimmy DeModica, let me say hello to Matt, Sally Boy, Davy T, Maddie, Dana, Cinnamon Girl, Barbara. How are you, my dear? I know you know that guy. Davy T, what's a good word? Whole ball as well. Nick, what's happening, my brother? I haven't spoke to you in at least 20 minutes. What's up, my brother? Davey T, I hope all is well. Sally Boy, good to see you back in the house. I thought you were on the lam. I was getting nervous. Um, without further ado, let's bring in my man, 50 grand, no doubt, Mr. James DeModica, limousine riding, high flying, always profiling. Jimmy Boy, what's <laughs> happening? Now, how are you, Greg? I see you do, you're doing well since uh, I came aboard on the show. you a beautiful home. Jimmy, since Beautiful we got together, it's the money is flying in. I, I didn't want to show off the piano and the, the living room with the bay window, but more importantly, the tie. You ever get this guy? My fucking tie costs more than your living room set. You know, one of those things. So this tie, forget about it. You know what I mean? You know, so yeah, you're talking about it. Yeah, Brion. Talking about a tie. Tie, right? My father used to go. With JG, they would go to Delisi, right? Delisi in New York, which was a good clother with real high line suits. Um, uh, I'm forgetting the name of the suits, but they were really expensive. Oh, and really? But, but they had all hand painted silk ties. And the silk ties, you would buy, he would buy a separate one just to cut it up and to make a hanky out of it to match the tie. It was like a $300 hanky to go with the $300 tie. That was at the Delisi um, store in New York. But I remember we'd be there so many times. The money that was spent on clothes, like like Billy Graham used to say uh, with the uh, WWF at the time in the 70s. He said, later, he goes, I'm, 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 I'm the man who spend more money just wearing clothes than most wrestlers making a lifetime daddy. He goes, That's Mr. Cameraman, right. zoom in on the 22-inch arm of the superstar. Yeah. He would say. That's right. And then Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Superstar Billy Graham was the man. We don't want to make this about the WWE, but that was beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, by the way, you brought up ties. You know, well, I did by, by being uh, sarcastic tonight, but I hope you do like to tie only for you to tie would come out, just like I'm clean shaven, only for you, Friday nights. And this will be a regular from now on. A tie will be on every Friday, a different tie. You'll tell me yeah, you like it, was, like it. In our in our world, that was that was a, a signature like Code yeah, word. Whenever, yeah. whenever my That's guy cool. would call me, he would say, he would say, uh, whenever he would use that phrase, he said, "When you come and see me, make sure you're wearing a tie. That means you better come back. That we got to go do some work. That's what it meant. Wearing a tie. So you reminded me of the good old days, my brother. Yeah. Well, you know, Jim, that's what I'm here for to try to. I didn't want you to think I was skimming off the top. I was afraid you would have seen the living room in the tie, and you thought I was skimming like back in the day in Chicago. But being that <laughs> you brought up clothes, I want to ask you if you remember one thing before we go to the chat, and there's something I do want to ask you before we get to the Q&A. Sure, remember, go right ahead, buddy. Do you remember a place in Manhattan everybody used to go to, even in my time, mid, late 90s, take six? I never used to be there. I'd be at Club A. Club right. A was on First Avenue, and I think it was... 57th uh i could be wrong but if i remember club a was on 
First Avenue between First and York, I think, or or between First and Second, and you had to have a membership to go in there. And I used to go to Nanny Ovaletto to eat. Nanny Ovaletto was on East 61st Street between Lexington and Park Avenue. And anybody that knew anything about Italian cuisine, that was the place. You'd be there with movie stars. I'd be there with Anthony Quinn. I'm doing card tricks for Anthony Quinn. Um, uh, Tony Bennett would be there. I remember Peggy Lee would be there. Jermaine Jackson was there one night, Michael Jackson's brother. And he was with a bunch of uh, Caucasian, his handlers or whether probably were agents or whatever. I remember he, he ate the soup and he, and he spit, but poof, he spit out a piece of celery, right? And he splashed it in the soup. I went, oh no, I said. <laughs> but Nanny, the owner, Luigi Nanny, he was only about not even five foot tall. And one night I was in there and there was a whole bunch of guys eating there because they had their lawyers there. F. Lee Bailey was there. All the big shots, Barry Slotnick, all the big shots were there. And there were, it was Joe Watts was there, Danny Marino, all the big shots were there. And at the time I was there with my fiance, which was the last, this was in the 90s, like 93, 94. And when I went there, I had I had brought my father to a wedding in Garden City, Long Island, which was which was Danny's son, which I who was getting know. married there. Mm -hmm. And my father, had, it was a black tie affair, so everybody was wearing tuxes. I wasn't invited, but my dad had gone. So when I went there, I I I told um I told Nani, the owner, I says I said, Mister Nani, I says. Tell Mr. Marino, I'd like to speak to him. So he went over there he said, and, I, and he came over to me and I said, I said, a few weeks ago when you went to the West, says, my father's Vinny from Jersey, Juicy. And he says, oh, Jesus Christ, kissing me, hugging me. Joe Watts was there. He says, hey, come here. He said, he looked like, he, he, he looks like uh, Ted Danson on steroids. That's what I, that's what he reminds me of when I really? see Joe Watts. And uh, naturally, I, I didn't get any tab that night. They picked up my check. And everything we had a very good time and uh f lee bailey is trying to make jokes but the money that was at that table when he went to go pay the check when danny went to pay that check whoo he took out a month enough money that'll, that'll choke 10 horses oh man he just peeled it off just peeled it off absolutely so uh, um, you you just reminded me of the story that's all yeah no no and it's good that's why this is good before we get into the q a you know i I got, you know, like with a lawyer, you know, whenever you have, God forbid, you need uh, any sort of attorney, especially a defense attorney that works. Sure. They charge everything. So I always got to keep my mind on the ticker because I know I'm going to get a bill and I can't let the bill go too high. I don't want the living room set to fool you. <laughs> All right. Don't worry about it. We're okay. <laughs> right. We'll make it up. We'll put it on my tab. Remember that one? Put it on my tab. Put it on my tab. Yeah. 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 Oh. Um, we're going to get to, to the Q&A in a second, but before we do, of course, I have something for you. And I remember a while back, going back maybe to when we first, nine months ago, eight, nine months ago, and we got into a really good conversation, and we never finished up on, I got to say the word, uh, right here because uh, I hear they're really cracking down. So it has to do with a for hire scam involving unlifing somebody. So if I say the word that starts oh. with the M, so it was a scam. No, to make no, 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 no. You don't. Explain. You don't have to worry about that because there was no such thing going to happen. Okay, right, I know. It, was, it was just this kid. This kid when I. When I was engaged to my to my son James, to his mother, his mother Fran, we were engaged at the time. She worked at a con at a store called NBO, which was National Brands Outlets, which was okay. for men. It was all men's clothing, and uh, there was a kid that worked there. He he was, uh, you know, he he was a little a little light in the loafers, but but not not that it was a bad guy, but but he he, he was. Very very dainty and he said uh i hate my father so much he says uh, i want to get rid of my father so right away i'm going to go for the payday i'm not going to do such a thing so <laughs> so i talked to him i says so i had another friend of mine meet we met at the 19th hole 
in Brooklyn on 86th Street. And then, but I think it was the Misfit Lounge just before that, but they just changed the name over to the 19th hole again. And I made my friend sit there to make it look like he was the big shot, like as if he was going to meet the boss, like, you know. It, well, it was all like, it's all set up just to get the money, you know. So this kid comes there. He's like stuttering and everything. He says, oh, yeah, well, what's going to happen? Uh, I said, first, so the kid goes, yeah, my name is Frankie Boy Fantasia. <laughs> it wasn't even no such animal. <laughs> but it's funny because you know why, Craig? The kid, the kid brought pictures and everything of his father and everything. Meanwhile, nobody's going to go through with this. As soon as we got the pictures, we just threw them in the, in down the gutter, and, you know, down the store. And we're talking to the kid, and we says, yeah, put up the money and all this stuff. So anyway, the kid was like, he was supposed to get a settlement and, and a, uh, a stipend from his father, but he never got it. But he only, he had certain amount. He had like about twenty thousand left of it. So naturally, I go for the jugular. I want to go for the twenty. So <laughs> he picks he picks up the money. Naturally, naturally, he's going to bring up the money. So now I'm trying to remember exactly how I went. I went to either the junkyard, the junkyard, which was always uh, it was always on the onset. It was like a Bluefield, New Jersey, the junkyard, which is right off of Bluefield Avenue. I, I tell, oh, that's what I told him. I told him that I says, I said, we went there. We got this guy. I said, we got him. I said, we went to the car. Now we're ready to go and get the car crushed up in the junkyard where we know the guy. Meanwhile, the junkyard that we know doesn't have a, a car crushing machine, but we just told him that. So we said that we went there at two o'clock, two thirty in the morning. And we said that as we went there, we had our lights off, but these, this cop rode by. These two cops rode by and they, they stopped us. And we just said, no, our friend is in the front seat. He's drunk. We thought maybe he was going to get sick. So we pulled over here and stuff like that. And he says the cop got out of the car and he looked over and he came back and he says, no, that guy, that guy ain't sick. Yeah, I know. I know who you are. He says, you're here to you're here to get rid of it with the, with the you know, by crushing the car up and everything. So. <laughs> so now this but this is all made up. Was just telling him this. There's no co such yes. cop that stopped this. So, so he says, "Well, you're going to pay us. You're going to pay us twenty thousand." Because I knew already what the kid had by his girl, by this girl that worked there who knew my who knew my my fiance told me what he had as a as a you know as as a as a, as a bunch of money to have you know the, that we knew that he had enough to to give. So. <laughs> The best part was when I told him that when it came time to pay the money and stuff, he said, I said, listen, these guys came to the hotel where we were at and they're going to try to shake us down. I said, I said, so I sent another guy into him. That's what it was. I sent another guy into him. So we made it at a hotel. So when he comes there, he's supposed to meet us there. So now I said, well, I said, I got this cop in the room. I said, I said, I don't want you to meet him. Meanwhile, there's nobody there. And I said, <laughs> I tell him, I says, meanwhile, we got this fake, this fake blood from, uh, from Mecca Magic Store. It was all, it was, it was great. You would have loved it, Craig. Like the movie so said. all of a sudden, I got a starter pistol. I got a starter pistol that you used to use at track events for high school events. You know, when, when you shoot the gun, the runner take off or whatever. So I said, look, I said, this guy, this guy ain't going to, going to, uh, going to, is going to, this cop ain't going to shake us down because the cop wanted money. I said, I told this cop to come here and pay us. I said, now you're here. You're here. So you better, I said, listen, we'll just wait here. Money. He hears a scuffle. Here's the shot. I come to the door with blood on my shirt. I said, listen, get out of here. I said, just go. At that point, he figures that now, not only is he involved, not, he, not only is he involved, in something that's sinister and bad and he's also involved in me getting rid of a cop too so at the same time he's willing to pay so he's paying the money but meanwhile nothing like this ever happened it's no. just so great when when you can see how the people when you use psychology on somebody it's it's really really a great it's a great tool to use when you have somebody that he says in his mind he says well gee if I don't pay them, look, I heard the shot. They'll might they might kill me. So that's what you have to have. 
you know, to make the guy believe so much that you're capable of doing this, that he's willing, he'll just go in his pocket just to just to to make all this problem go away and to make this thing leave out of his mind so he could just relax. And that's the idea. That's that's where you that's where you usually get him. We say that the cop did it and all that. But it was it, it was a long story, but I'm just trying to curtail it and just well, trying to no, cut I it short. And they love it. That's but, what I, I get it. I get it. But um, when something goes, when, when you make it look like trying to do something and something goes wrong, you're trying to make it look like you made up for it. But at the same time, you spin it around, you flip it, and you make the guy feel like he's guilty where he has to pay. That's the bottom line. Absolutely. And, uh, those, those were the good old days. This was the early 80s, like 82, 83. So, you know, but that, but that, it, was, it was a fun time. I, I, I used to enjoy all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, um, I was going to say, you know, um, it's very possible um, you truly enjoyed that part of the life. You know, uh, to a lot of people, they'll never, you know, they can't comprehend that. Um, that adrenaline rush, whatever it is that's going on, that might be happening, whether it's a, a score, or a scam, a move, whatever we want to call it. Okay. Yeah, well, the, the the best part was the kid. The kid had no dealings with his dad, so he had no contact with his father. So he didn't know, even with a phone call, because he had no he had no uh, communication with his dad. So only if he had to go through his sister to even speak to him. So when I told him that that we did the job and we had him in the car, we were getting rid of him at at the uh, junkyard. He believed it because he never even. I, I told him, I said, under any circumstances, don't call your father because it, it'll look bad that there's a record on your phone record of calling him if anything should happen to him. So in other words, it was just perfect. It's like the perfect mark, the perfect, the perfect dummy. And it was a perfect payday for me. So that's how it goes. Um, I'm glad, you know, I, I, you know, these, these things are great. Um, I'm just, um, with this particular scam, nobody was. It wasn't big enough where everybody, nobody got a condominium or nothing, or a co-op, or no. That that money was brought to Atlantic City. We wound up losing it in three days. So okay. <laughs> well, I just want you to know before we get into the chat, because if you're here every Friday, it's my boy Stacks is here. Um, Stacks and Roy, what's happening, brother? And Bobby, we've been doing so well. We're making so much money with Jimmy here. I wore a tie tonight in case there's something he needs me to do after the show. And I wanted everybody to see my new living room set that, you know, Jimmy helped out with from a score from 20 years ago. Anyway, Jimbo. Um, it's longer, it was older than that in the 80s. Yeah, yeah listen, I, we're going to get to them. I give you my word. This is it. But we, before we came on, I said something as a joke. But you said something. I think they would love to hear. I said to you, we were joking about something good, fellas. And I said, remember, you know, when Joe Pesci is, I thought he never shut the F up. And he's supposed to be playing the character attitude wise of Kurt, who you knew very well. Tell me right, about right. You, said you said you were very close with Joe Pesci. You called him Joey. That tells me you're close yeah. to that guy. No, very, very close. My, my, we were very close. And, when we were living in Frankie Valley's house in 1968, there was a there was a uh, a nightclub that uh, it was called the Bell Brook. Uh, it was on it was on Belmont Avenue. It was in Belleville, on the North borderline near Bluefield Avenue. And the guy that used to run the place was called Masher. Masher at the time meant like a womanizer. That's that's what a guy would be called back in the day, way back in the, in the 40s. They would call him a Masher. Anyway, that was his nickname. And Masher didn't pay Joe Pesci because he was with Frankie Vincent. You always see Frankie Vincent and Joe Pesci in the movies. Uh, Raising uh, Bull. In, a lot of them. Yeah, Raising Bull, you'll see Frankie Vincent is the it's guy who played Salvi. He played Salvi. Then in in the, in the Casino, in the movie Casino, he's the guy with the gray hair and like he's, he's supposed to be Joe. Yeah. Yeah, he's supposed to be. Yeah, he's supposed to be Joey's best man. Anyway, they were a comedy team for years that played the the tri-state area, 
for many, many years. They played as a comedy. They were very funny. And when Joey played there at the Bellbrook, Masher didn't try, he didn't pay him. So Joey got a hold of my father. And this was back in 1968. And we're living in Frankie Valley's house. And Frankie lived downstairs. This was a two family house. Frankie lived on the bottom with his family, with his two daughters, Francine and Tony. And oh, and, and his uh, also his stepdaughter, Seal, and his wife, Mary. So when they're upstairs, my father gets the call, gets the call from Joe Pesci. He says, you know, the juice, that guy didn't pay me. He goes, all right. I'll handle this now. He's, he, so he calls up the Bellbrook. He says on the phone, he says, you hear me, Masher? You hear me, tough guy? I'm coming down there now. You don't have that guy's money. I'm coming down with an axe. I'm going to show you what a tough guy is all about. He hung up the phone. And and, uh, and Frankie was there in our kitchen right there. Frankie Valley was in our kitchen. And he told my mother, he says, Pat, he says, he goes, I, says, I, I can't stop him. He says, he, he's going to do what he wants. So he ran out of the house. By the time my father got there to the Bellbrook, the guy left the money for Joey. He left the money for Joey. But that was only one instant. Then my father had a restaurant called The Feast. It was in West Orange. And Frankie, Frankie and Joe Pesci were performing there to try to get the place off the ground, you know, to get it going. And I remember they were doing so well and the bar was doing a good ring that they were ready to close their act and just call it a night. And my father told him to stay up there another hour. So Frankie Vincent says with Joey, he says, uh, he says, well, uh, you know, we, we were ready to leave. He says, but uh, we just got a threatening message to stay. So we're going to stay here a little longer. <laughs> so that was it. But Joey and I were dear friends. He always told me, like, because I was trying to be in the acting business because I was on Beretta, Kojak. I was in uh, Crazy Joe, Stepford Wives. Uh, Death Wish, the original Death Wish. I did a lot of parts. I was in Raging Bull on a, many, many. I, I worked there many weeks. You still see my name, James DeMonica, when they still they roll the credits for a long time at the end of the movie. But you'll see my name in it. You still it says Man at Table Number Two. But I actually had much more, much more speaking in the movie. For that was Raging Bull. You know, so I used to be. I want to say yeah. something about Raisin Bull, and I know we're not a movie uh, critic show, but you know, from young, we we I mean, very young, uh, most would say crazy. We sat down as as boys and had to endure watching The Godfather one to, one and two at very young ages, and it was being explained to us as we're watching it. We're young, like you want to watch the Yankee game, whatever. But I want to say this about Raisin Bull. And of course, she learned to love The Godfather, a great movie, whatever. I got to tell you, Raging Bull, I don't know how old I was, but that movie left an impression on me. Really? And, yeah. And, yeah. It, and I'm not, you know, just the whole, the old, the wise guy, Tommy, who played the old man, phenomenal. Oh. Um, he also played coach in Cheers. Um, right. And then when Joe. Pesci. That was is, Nicholas. That was Nicholas Colasanto. I couldn't think of he his was, name. Right. Excellent. Yeah. And when Joe Pesci is bouncing Frank Vincent's head off the door, the car door. Yeah. And he hits him with the glare. I mean, I know it's violent. I, I I'm just saying. I was there for all them scenes. I, I I watched all that stuff happen. Yeah. And and when Jake Lamar says Joey, my wife Joey. I was like, what? It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was good, so right? <laughs> De, Niro, De Niro was so powerful as an actor. Like, you see what he's he's looking at the both of them. He's looking at Vicky. He's looking at Joey the night before the fight. And he says, I'm disgusted with the two of you. He goes, shut yeah. up. I'll take care of it. And he just stays silent. He has a power in his silence, just in silence alone. That's how good he was. He was so good. Pete Savage is the guy that wrote the book, Raging Bull, along really? with Joseph Carter. Pete Savage, it, the movie was produced in association with him. Pete Savage loved me. He loved me. He wanted me to play the part of Salvi, of Frankie Vincent's part. But Joey, once Joey got, got hired, they hit, when they, when they uh, auditioned in front of Scorsese, they liked the way how Joey and Frankie Vincent gelled because they knew each other's nuances yeah. from having a comedy team for years. So that's why they picked Frankie. But otherwise, 
Freak Pete Savage told me, he said, that was a very young crew. He says, you to uh, Sis Corman, who was the one who really casted the movie, had said, when she saw me, she said, she had a lisp. She said, you're Salvi. You're Salvi. Don't even read for me. Go read for Marty. So I had to go read for Marty Tessetta. I mean, um, Scott Marty Tessetta. Marty oh, Scorsese. Yeah. Marty Scorsese, because there's a Marty Tessetta, Marty, too, in Marty, Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it, it, he was living at the Galleria on 57th Street in Manhattan up in the penthouse. Mm -hmm. So De Niro was there and he was constantly losing weight for the part because they were first filming the scenes when he's real thin. So he got very thin. So when he gained the weight for the movie, it would be such a it would be such a different contrast. You would see him. It, it, it would be so much. So he's just eating yogurt with wheat germ in it. De Niro. So. I was there, and I and, and I auditioned for them. Just, just, see, just the yeah. three of us, just the three of us in Mar in Mar Yeah. So, but the thing was, but Joey had the in by getting Frankie Vincent the part. So Frank, so Frankie Vincent and Joe Pesci, they got they got the two the two spots, you know. But uh, Joe Pesci is my dear friend. We were in Vegas when he did Casino, the movie Casino. At first, when he came out, because we went to dinner with Frankie Vincent first. He says, uh, as there as as Joey was coming out with his entourage of men, he says, uh, Joey, he says, say hello to Jimmy. He goes, Oh, oh yeah, hi, hi. He says, He's Joe. He says, That's Jimmy, that's Juicy son. He goes, Oh, Jesus Christ. He goes, You look just like your father. He says, Oh my God. Then he looks at my fiance and he goes, And you, you look the same. <laughs> Joey, Joey, Joey was funny. He has a twinkle in his eye, Joey. He's very, very easy. He's an outstanding talent, Joey. Yeah. He's very good. And he's from Belleville. He's yeah. from two blocks away from me. He comes. We're all from this area. Silver Lake Amazing. has a more gunman and a lot more good actors. Jack Carroll was from this neighborhood. He has a beautiful voice singing in the movie 40 Guns with Barbara Stanwyck. He was supposed to be a big star, but he had to go on. He had to go on. Uh, uh, he had to go on strike. Because he wanted a different manager, so he couldn't work for a year, and it ruined his career. You ever see the, the Western, 40 Guns? You see Jack Carroll sings all throughout the movie. What a voice he had. He Again, he was right from the street that I grew up on. You know, a lot of stars. You, you, you know, I'm, I'm taking up a lot of their questions, but I think it might be stuff they want to know about because well, you, you're, you're on a roll with this, so I'm going to keep it going. No, no, whatever, whatever, whatever yeah, people want. Ask, yeah, I want to ask you this, and I got some questions being lined up. I want to ask you this. There's a song that you love, and I've grown to love. I used to hear it as a kid. I heard it around. and But I heard a story when I was very young about Jimmy Roselli. And I want to ask you if you heard similar or knew even more. I heard, as a youngster, it wasn't said to me. I heard it in a conversation. Um, with my father and an, an, and an older man and the older man was telling my father Jimmy Roselli was supposed to be better than all of them he is better than all of them but he was. something with something and they just didn't want him I know the story I know the story yeah, can we imagine? Go ahead. What, I, I, I know the story. I know this is the real story, what happened. Jimmy Ro Roselli, when he played Carnegie Hall, he had standing ovation for three nights in a row. This guy was so good, and he sings in Italian, the language of, 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 of Italian language, so good. He had so powerful voice, and, 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 and he sings in, in English. That's the song in the beginning that you play, Little Pal. It's about a guy that has to go away, like, again, a gangster and his son, should he be on a new daddy's knee? He goes, pray for me now and then, my little pal. It's a powerful song. Very but powerful. what happened was uh, Frank Sinatra's mom, there was a birthday party for her. This was like in the early 60s. This was right after Femina. Mala Femina was a big hit for Jimmy Roselli. My and she, yes. Frank Sinatra's mother wanted Jimmy Roselli to sing at her birthday party, which they did arrange. But there was a comedian, Jewish comedian, Buddy Hackett. Buddy Hackett was working at another club somewhere, and Jimmy Roselli was there. They wind up getting drunk, and they never showed up. 
Jimmy never showed up for the for the party for Sinatra's mother. So what happened was Sinatra got him got him blackballed. He said that if you if you hire this guy, I'm not going to come to your club uh, here, there, or whatever. And he tried to ruin his recording. He had so many albums that after that, the album stopped. Nobody wanted to do business with him. That's how powerful Sinatra was at the time. But Sinatra was the one who put the brakes on Jimmy Roselli's career. That's the true story, what happened. Because Jimmy Roselli never showed up for Sinatra's mom's birthday party and sang. Yet he could have made it up. But it was a bad mistake to do that to, uh, and honestly, at the time. I guess. Yeah, and honestly, if you, you listen to both their voices, what do I know? Sinatra couldn't hold a candle to Jimmy Roselli's voice. No, in, Sinatra, in Italian no. or English. Just my no. opinion. What do I Jimmy Roselli, if you really listen to him and you hear him sing, well, sing yeah, songs in Italian, you want to hear the power in his voice. Like, but he was so good. And what a good. And my and he, my father loved him because they would go see him at the Copa and stuff. At the time, he would sign autograph pictures for me. He, he didn't know me at the time, but he wrote his autograph pictures as to the future quarterback. Of Belleville, instead of, of Belleville High School, he wrote of the Belleville High. He wrote it. He wrote it like like a, he spoke. He wrote it like he was speaking broken English, like a, like a, like an Italian from the other side. It was funny. All right, but so uh, you you share so much, and I know you know uh, the meat is running. We got some questions, and I took a lot of them. They're gonna they're gonna be upset with me, but I I thought it was stuff, guys. You might want to hear. We were getting on the roll with the actors. And, and then the Jimmy Roselli thing came in, and I figured I'd ask it because I heard it as a kid. That's why I asked it. First question from Roy, all the way from the across the pond. He comes in. Oh, oh, yes, that was, is that probably, Roy Munson? Yes. Roy Munson? Probably, yeah, probably 3.30 in the morning now, maybe. He asks, do you remember or heard of a person named Kevin Kelly? No. Uh. I've heard of him. I, I believe he was with the same guy with the, um, uh, with the guy we spoke about yes, last me. week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I yeah, believe well, I believe they were. Us. I believe they were part of the same the same faction, like uh, or the or the same cause. Yes, I believe. absolutely. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yes. I know what you mean. Um, yeah. And, uh, is that the same? Is that the same guy we're talking about? Yeah, Roy, is that is it uh, the gentleman we're speaking about? Um, is um, is he um, was was he you know with the same cause as the gentleman from that we uh, Jimmy knew uh, mentioned that he said he you know knew the name last week and knew the person. If you could let us know, that'd be great. Kevin Kelly, and he spelt it a certain way. He oh. spelt it different. He spelt it different than Roy spelt it different than we would spell Kevin here. He spelled it different, unless it was a typo. But what Roy, when he's uh, he'll get because. Oh no! Oh, no, he was Jim. Oh, he's a uh, a West Westy guy. He was with Jimmy Coonan, but he worked with the guy. Let oh, um, no. But I Coonan. we we as far as that goes, we met Jimmy. Jimmy Coonan was a hell of a guy. Let me tell you something. He was a real guy. We we loved him. He was more friendly with our side than anybody else's. Any other any other faction. Jimmy Coonan was a good good guy. Trust me, good guy. Good guy. But I just thought because Kelly is so it's so familiar in the Irish world. It's 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 a name that's it's pretty common. So absolutely. So again. Uh, I know a lot of guys. I know a lot of guys of substance. A lot of guys that are that are just you know that aren't really there, but people think they are because they know a guy that knows a guy that's, that's a nephew of that's a guy. And meanwhile, the guy's nobody. You know what I mean? But that, so that that goes on with you know this thing. You know that you know because uh, because you know you have a fourth party relation or you you shook somebody's hand that automatically meant you you know to some people you were in that group. No, that doesn't mean that. But anyway, yeah, but I think um, I think he I think he was I think he was friendly with Featherstone though, if I ever, if I remember. With Mickey Featherstone? Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah. 
Yeah, and Roy is saying he heard that he was very tight with your guys, especially, you know, to get, yeah. you know, to get me to Right. Play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank, anybody thank you, Roy. Else? Thank you. Yeah, Roy's thank always you, Roy. got stuff. Oh, Roy's always got stuff. Oh, Craig, here we go. Craig, did Jimmy know Fat Tony Salerno? And that is coming from my brother-in-law, Benny Salerno. No, I never was never was with him. We never we never with, never had never had never dealt with him because again, let me tell you something. Like there's 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 other crews, but as far as I'm concerned, that that there's nobody like our crew. In other words, I don't lay down for another crew. Uh, if if because Fat Tony, when he was always like he was only hung, always hungry for a buck, but. There was there was a lot a lot of captains with him that I was friendly with very much so that we did joint ventures with and made money with, but as far as him goes, no, I never dealt with him. No, not at all. Absolutely. No. And um, you see a lot of the guys in this crew, and you know Benny and Sal, family. A lot of people, not a lot, but there's a good amount of, of people in here. Uh, like where from my dad was from, they're all their families are all from East Harlem. Like my whole family's from East Harlem. Right. Well, you knew East Harlem was, you know, kind of like Belleville was a, you know, sure, sure. Was coming, back then, everybody was coming out of East Harlem, some Brooklyn too, but East Harlem was a big, uh, a big, a big area where a lot of big names came from. Anyway, uh, good question, Ben. Oh, Matt says those damn Irish, Kevin Kelly. Yeah, I remember. I can tell you, Kevin Kelly, uh, the fighter. We'll have Freddie on here to talk about that. But let's uh, get to Jimmy. Um, I'm just looking through them. Jimmy, you have any yes. opinions on? You said you did a little work with Charles Bronson. Any? Did you have any dealings with Charles Bronson, or like, did you get to talk to him at all? Was he a decent guy? Yeah, well, the the part that I had when I was in that movie, don't forget, I'm young. I'm like six. I was 16, but I yeah, looked yeah, a lot yeah. older. And I was driving the subway. And the first time when he goes down into the subway system and he, I think he does his, one of his first murders or something. Well, we went to lunch one day, but at the time, yeah, I really didn't get a chance to really hang out with him. But the guy who I was really got to really be friendly with was Robert Blake. That was on uh, Beretta. I would stay at his house. I'd live at his house in uh, San Bernardino uh, in California. And uh, his name of his house, he called it Matahari Ranch. I don't know why he called it that, but that's what he called it. And Because when I first did card tricks for him, when I was on the show Beretta, I was on twice. I played a hijacker, and then I played a three-card Monty guy on the street, like where I'm robbing people. And he says, hey, kid. I'm going to bust you if you don't give me the information. What's this you heard that the pool hall was held up? Or I said, yeah, go check out the guy. Uh, no read. You know, something, something silly. But that's how it was. But I got a chance to hang out with him. He was going out with Linda Ronstadt at the time. And I, I don't know that I ever tell you the story when when we were going in the club. And Linda Ronstadt, she had a she cursed no, like a trooper. No, that's one I didn't get. I, no, no. And then we, we were in the club and the guy walked past him uh, and he had a leather, you know, leather jacket on and he was kind of chubby with a beard. And he bumped to Robert Blake. Robert Blake went, what? What? You want to fight, bitch? He took off his jacket and he wanted to fight. He goes, wait a minute. You're and the guy goes, that's right, daddy. I'm the star of the blob. And that was Steve McQueen. That was just before he died. It was just before he died, like about six months before he died. Because he gained a lot of weight and he had a bad heart attack, which killed him. Uh, but we were there. We were all hanging out together. Me, Linda Ronstadt, and Robert Blake. Because he loved me when I did car tricks for his kids, for uh, Noah and Della. Or Deli or Della. That was that was the daughter. And uh, But as far as, uh, as far as Charles Bronson, no. I didn't get a chance to hang out with him, no. Yeah, I've been with a lot, of other, a lot of stars, but not, not, not that one. Gotcha. Um, I got a great question here from Stevie Marinello. Great guy. You would love Stevie. Trust me, you would love Stevie. Yeah. Um, Stevie's got a question, and he don't ask many things. Um, Craig, ask Jimmy if he um, knows anybody from 
more of not the city, like if we were going up towards Canada, way up New York, you know what I mean? Like if we were up going upstate, were there any guys you ever dealt with up, up more northern outside of the city? But on the New oh, York side. I had, a, I had a fixed labor for local 417, which was way up upstate New York. Uh, his name was Gary Gatos. He used to run local 417 with the iron workers. And I had to go up there and I had to fix labor up there for him. But as far as that go, but a lot of the Colombo guys was friendly with him. But that guy was smart. He never once would ever say where he sat, where who he belonged with. He just wouldn't say it. Yeah, but he would say, hmm, uh, yeah. I said, well, I was, uh, I said, I'm at the house. I was at Junior's house up in Saugerty State, you know, upstate New York at Saugerty's. He goes, hmm, that rings a bell. Uh, Saugerty's rings a bell. But he still wouldn't say it. That's This is how this guy was. He just wouldn't mention exactly where he was. But all the compass needle pointed to Junior Persico. But that's that's how it was back then. The guy was very cautious. But as far as uh, as far as working going up near Canada or something like that, no, I never would have to go that far. I mean, if business called to go there, you yeah. can bet your bottom dollar I would be there. <laughs> okay, you know, because I get sometimes not even, not Stevie. Stevie don't ask too much. He's he uh, he he got the manual as a youngster, I believe. Um, what I'm saying is this. Um, I get a lot of questions, um, not not right here, but it'll come. It's a very, I hear it everywhere, not just to me. A lot of guys way up, upstate New York, not Stevie. Stevie's never asked me this. But a lot of guys want to know you, me, my uncle Frankie, whoever, the guy down the block. Everybody wants to know that every, about Buffalino, Buffalino, Buffalino. And you know what I find just, it's not until that movie came out that any, everybody started talking about the name. You know what I mean? Russell Buffalino, Russell Buffalino. It's after the movie comes out, but so a lot of guys from way up in, I don't know if it's PA or Pittston, whatever it is. And did anybody in New York deal with him? Because they made him carry, it seemed like he carried a lot of weight. Well, that could have been, but like again, okay, Stevie. I, I'm only going to be with people I'm told to be with at the time, Absolutely. or I have business with. I'm not here as a historian to just to say, "Hey, I I rub shoulders with so and so." Look, Absolutely. look, I look at the picture. I went. I don't give yeah. a damn about that. I don't care about pictures. I, I just I'm there to make the money. I'm to make the money. That was the name of the game. If they called me, a lot of times other crews would call me that they had a contractor working in my territory and they wanted the labor to be fixed. They had to come to see me, and I'm the one that straightened it out. They had to see me because I'm the boss that ran that stuff. I wasn't the boss Absolutely. of the family, but I was the boss of the labor, the labor union in Newark, in Kearney, in Irvington, Belleville, Bluefield, Nutley, uh, Hillside, and all of the above. Whatever, whatever my yeah, territory yeah. encompassed, I had it. They had to come to me. They had to deal with me. Amazing. My buddy Stevie says um, that it's cool. He's up in the, the New York side in the Niagara Falls area, but you never did nothing up that way, correct? I just no. asked him again because he said, let you know the neighborhood, you know, the area. Okay, just was asking. No dealings up there. Um, I just want to say something. Um, I'm not going to say who it is, but, you know, sometimes you just don't know in life, but you're going to know. And, you know, some other people in the chat will know. But there's a couple of guys in this chat that are very – Low key, they don't say too much, they don't say nothing. And I'll tell you this. Um, their dad, okay, and someday I'll tell tell the story. Their dad grew up, not only was he a man's man who's no longer here, um, but he had two dear friends that went on to be um somewhat powerhouses. One of them was so feared that he disappeared, and it's public knowledge, Gas and uh, his partner, Gas, they didn't want all the power in the Bronx, so 
Buddy Longo disappeared. And Mr. Prisco, Angelo Prisco, just recently, I believe, passed away not too long ago in prison. Um, but he's a Harlem guy. Jersey, yes, was in Jersey, but he was a Harlem guy. And, you know, a couple of guys in here, their dad, like brothers in the wedding parties, the tight. And, you know, you just never know. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's beautiful. I respect them so much because they don't say shit. They don't talk shit. They never did. And they would, they would, and they didn't have their dad a long time, but their mom actually, and, and, you know, others taught them how to, how to behave and uncles and whatnot. And, came out of Harlem and, and let me tell you, they could have threw names around up and down all day and never did. I was around them my whole life and they never threw names around ever, ever, ever. And you don't yeah. see that a lot. You know no, what I mean? But you, no, but you see that with my father. He don't say nothing. No, he don't say right. nothing. And he could have, right. And he didn't. No, he don't say nothing. It's amazing. Um, Okay, Stevie says, yeah, yeah, Stevie, are you? If that's you, I'm going to say, announce it as that. I want to make sure I get it right. I don't want to get it wrong, and I'll say it. Um, TT Rad, always great to see you in here. If you got any questions for Jimmy, let me know. I can hear the growling. Um, Somebody, it's, um, that, yes, it's, it's that time, yes. I know, I know, brother. I know. All right, here we got this another one. My friend's husband was like the number three in the state police. Maddie, this is the wrong chat to say that in anyway. I'm only kidding. Their kid was super close with Fat Tony's kid, so they socialized. She spoke highly of Tony, he was super generous up in the Rhineback area of New York. It's great to hear. It's good to see he gave back to the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. that's great. Moving right along. Yes. Yeah, moving right along. Um, I think my, my, my partner here, who I, I care for dearly, um, first off, he's, uh, I believe, a relation to Joe Bonanno. And at one time, we all know, you know, Joe had a lot of power. Before my time, I'm a young kid. I used to hear stories about how powerful he was back, I guess, in the 50s. When, when was Joe Bonanno's reign? Really, 60s? Well, the, the, from the 30s the on up, through the 40s, oh, 30s to the 60s, wow. and then 70s. Yeah. And then yeah, he wrote he a was... book and they got man, They chased him. Correct? Yeah. And he wrote yeah, a book well, and then they were. He, he, didn't have to, he didn't have to do that, but. Uh, what are you going to do? If the guy did it, the guy did it because he, he had enough money to do anything he wanted to do. But but then again, people, are, they don't they don't look, you know, they don't look at that too highly. You know, see, a lot of times people say, say, Fat Tony, there, there was a Fat Tony that used to run my labor union, local 342. He's he's passed away since. But he used to be there. That was before my father had it. When he went to jail in 1990, my father took over. 1992, 90, 93, right? They were about, my father went away. But again, he never introduced me to nobody. I saw the vacuum. I seized the power. Like I told you, real power is something you take. And that's what I did. I went around and said, you used to dealing with you, so you're going to deal with me now. New York, it impressed New York so much, they gave me all the blessing. And then they kept me because I was a good earner. That's the Absolutely. name of the game. <laughs> Jimmy, one last question. And then, as they say, I think in Japanese, sayonara. But, okay. Miss TT Rad, awesome. We don't get her all the time. She's great. God bless TT. I hope everything's well. She has a great question for you. Jimmy, did you know Joe God, RIP Magnolia Street, Belgul? He was my uncle. Of course. He's my dear friend. He was my dear friend. You see what that, is... TV? Go ahead. Yeah. He was married to Lorraine. Their daughter, uh, God, what was the daughter's name? I can't remember her name now. Jesus, I'm forgetting it right now. But we grew up together. We were on Magnolia Street. That's right. I grew up on number 12 Magnolia. 
they were, and my Uncle Joe was at 73. They were just before that. I would say maybe they were at 69, Magnolia. But Joe, Gar Joe Gardabascio. Yeah, so that's the, Joe Gard. Does the name he, Renee? He, Renee? Yeah, Renee. Renee. That's her. Yeah, Renee. That's the daughter. Yeah. That's Renee's the team. daughter. Awesome. Yeah. So I just, I don't know why. I just forgot it. I just forgot it for a moment. But Renee was his daughter. And Joe Gard, when he worked at, at Budweiser, he worked at Budweiser as under the laborers with Tony Proto at the time. 19, this is the summer of, of 89. He would work because Renee had gotten married and he would make sure that Renee had anything she needed for her and her new husband. He would work extra all the overtime he would just give to Renee. I remember. But Joe Gard was real close with Cabert, real close. People don't know how close he was with Cabert as a friend. But Joe Gard was was a was a stand-up guy, wouldn't say a peep, wouldn't say nothing. But Joe Gard, and then then Nicky Goon was his uh, I think it was his cousin, Nicky Goon, Nicky Gardabascio. He just passed away also about um, I think it was about a year or so, or two years maybe. He passed away. He was my dear friend also. But Joe Gard was my dear friend and he was close with Gabert and my father. But uh Thank you for uh, for saying yeah, that. You know, it's beautiful when we, we can connect people like that. That's great. Now, yeah. I just want to say, I'm, I was ready to say sayonara to you, but your better half, I'm sorry. I have to say it because, you know, Kat, if my wife's listening. Honey, as soon as I get home, please don't beat me up. All right, listen, Jimmy, Barbara says, yeah. but somebody might have asked her in the chat, Jimmy did box and was great at it, but his father, Juicy, was a professional. Maybe Jimmy will explain a little bit more. Maybe you won't. It's up to you. Or do you want no. to say? Well, well, my father, my father went away. When he went away, I was two years old. Then he came home when I was 12. First thing he did was bought me a heavy bag. He brought it home. We hung it in the garage and he taught me how to use my hands. I I fought every kid in the in the in Silver Lake. And I'm talking about when I'm 13, I'm boxing kids that were 16. That's a bigger deal when you get kids that are little like three years older than you. Because don't forget, their hormones are kicking in. They're more they're more manly as they get older. I I, I beat up everybody because my father, I knew how to throw my hands real good. But again, my father was uh, he was a uh, Golden Glove champion for New York and New Jersey. He was national AAU, which is Amateur Athletic League Absolutely. national champion of, of a, as a welterweight. He was he was a box he was fighter of the month in Ring Magazine. I think it was either fifty two or I forget which month fifty two. We get thirty eight likes. I don't mean to cut Jimmy off. We got thirty seven people in here. If anybody, if everybody could just hit the thumbs up, thirty seven likes help us more than anything. 37, 39 likes. If we get thirty nine. Cinnamon Girl, everybody in the chat, get on him. Everybody hit that thumbs up. Jimmy, <laughs> amazing yes. that you were able to connect again. And actually, because I know how hard it is, and I know it sucks when somebody wants to ask you if you knew somebody, and it's a no. Like, maybe you wish you could tell them yes, but no bullshit here. Not going to say yes to say yes. No, and but but, also, Craig, but Craig, I'm going to know a lot. Of, I know so I many know. people. It's just that it's just that when you're on the inside, mm -hmm. everybody knows everybody. It, it sounds like BS, but it's not. Everybody knows everybody. I'm Absolutely. telling you, it's because you have to. Because when you go to a club and if somebody is related and somebody gets stupid with a drink, you can't crack a guy in the mouth because he may be related to somebody. It's going to be a sit. It's going to go to a sit, which means a sit down, and you better be right. Because no bosses ever give each other wrong. The guilty party is the guy who has to be found guilty. And if it's money monetarily involved, then it just becomes a question of how much or a settlement is worked out. Absolutely. That's how it goes. Absolutely. So, again, I love you. And thank you again. For Wait a minute. Is, 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 is this your way of saying goodbye? No, no, because you were telling me it was getting to be that time. No, it, it's getting to be that time. I'd like the chat to stick by for a second when Jimmy goes, because we're going to talk really bad about him. He'll never know. 
Um, <laughs> I, I love Wrong. you, brother. Never, not in a million years. You could light me in oil and douse the flame. That'll never happen. And anybody in this chat knows me, I mean it. I don't know. I might start to say something after I'm on fire. But anyway, I got you, brother. Love you. We'll talk during the week. And um, I didn't tell you this. I, you know, I don't think we spoke about it. We are now officially in the minor league. You know, we're over, a little over 500 subs. So we're now we're in like a ball. You know, we were in the rookie league for a long time. Now we made it to like single A. So we just keep putting out truths. That's all we can do. Truths like we do. And you build it, they will come. How do well, you feel about that? That's what I do each week. I, I don't lie. I just tell you the truth with all things that happen with me. And I hope it's enlightening and entertaining. And I hope that everybody enjoys it. I'm just happy and proud that I was able to wear my tie for you tonight. And that you're here doing it with us when you could be on 100 shows doing it. But you chose to be here with me and us. Thank you. Well, you. I'm, ex I'm exclusive. I'm exclusive with you, Craig. With no contract, wow! Right, because because good because it's hard. It's it's real men are. It's hard to find real men out there nowadays. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Jimmy. We love you. Chat, stick around. I want to just talk to you guys for a second. If you just don't have nothing to do, Jimmy, I love you. We'll talk over the weekend or whatever. All right, my brother. Okay, my brother. All right, let's bye go, bye, everybody. Love oh, you. Okay, thumbs up, <laughs> guys. I hope everybody enjoyed that. Um, I, um, I want to, um, I told my cousin that, um, I was going to, uh, cause he's going to come on. Um, you know, we don't, we don't like to say, you know, I tell, I always say this. We don't, we never, absolutely. We don't guarantee anything, uh, uh, you know, big things are coming, this, that, the other thing, but, but, but. I'm 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 telling you, as you saw Johnny Farinacci the other night do boxing with us, um, we we have some things in in, in line. Um, Raymondi's uncle, I hope to see you around. We we you know we do this a couple times a week. Jimmy is every Friday. There's other things we do do, um, so you know that um, we do do some sports stuff and. We get into a lot of different things, but twice a week we 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 reminisce on things that went on in life, and Jimmy's a big part of that, obviously. Um, I want to, um, Davey. I got a little of Papa Chubby for you. Um, I spoke to my cousin. Um, I know you know him, and there's some other people in this chat that know him. So, this is one of the few songs that I'll be able to, I'll be able to play and not have to worry about being copyrighted. So, Davey, tell me what you think. Nick, tell me what you think. Yo, you guys hear me? All right, so I'm going to tell you guys um, what we got going on. A, I think we had a uh, productive, fun night, which is, is always important to me that we're trying to uh, – yeah, no, I know. It's down now. Um, so we're trying to work it out right now. He was in the hospital. Um, you know, I don't know, you know, kind of like the football show. What I wanted to tell you guys, I didn't want to – it was just so much typing in the community thing. Um, you know, I want to do more of what you guys want. So I know that you guys are – I'm thankful that you guys let me continue doing this draft stuff and football stuff because it's very small. I understand that. I'm being selfish. I'm willing – this is about you guys. I always said that, so I'll be a hypocrite. So if you want to kill that show and add something else, we can do it. If you guys want to hear a musician come in and tell you his life story, and maybe he'll play a little something for us. Um, truthfully, I never realized how popular my cousin was until I had people like from all over telling me, oh, your cousin's with Papa Chubby. Yeah. Man. <laughs> and it just would blow my mind. Um, and then we have 
when I tell you from some of the greatest, I'll use the word greatest, and the biggest names in the world of fighting, jiu-jitsu, um, boxing, um, we have, we're have we putting dates together now, and they're not far away. I can tell you this, not this Monday night, starting next Monday night, most likely, no, it's definite, but, we, you know, we just... Johnny Farinacci, who did the interview with us and fought for Team Canada, he's going to be filling in for, as you can see, I break Timmy Irish's chops. Um, he's got 87 days to get back. But Johnny's going to be filling in on the desk with us uh, while we do our classics bo boxing matches. OG Ruby, what's happening, Rube? So Johnny Farinacci is going to be with us on Monday nights doing boxing. We have so many. I, I, I don't want to say the names because there's there's names. And um, it's really not even about the name. It's about how great a people they are and their stories. Um, just like if you guys told me your cousin's Papa Chubby, he's, he's we can't stomach him. He would, you know, cousin or no cousin, he wouldn't be here. I'm just glad that there are a few people that, would like to hear his story. His story is better than his guitar work. And I, I hear, I wish I understood, you know, I understand guitar work, but I'm not a guitarist. I'm not a musician. You know, I, I threw football. I was an athlete. Um, his story is better than his guitar music. And that's incredible, as, as you know. So getting him on to the open up and tell his story because we lived it and grew up right next door to each other across the hall um, is going to be special for me and, and, you know, special for him in a sense because it's not too many of these that he's done where he's going to answer some questions that his cousin's going to ask him. You know, maybe a lot of people haven't asked him. Uh, so he's going to be coming up. I just know from his Facebook stuff, he's always playing, doing concerts for free on Facebook for his for his people in Europe all over. You know, he's bigger in Europe than he is here. I mean, he's big here, but he's huge in Europe. He's always in France, Amsterdam, all over. That's one. We have some big fighters coming on that add to the boxing show. I told you Johnny's going to be a co-host until Timmy gets back. And when Timmy gets back, Johnny will always have a seat with us whenever he wants one. And um, there's many more, from authors to, you know, we want to be more variety, but I do understand the intrigue with the street stuff, the mob stuff. I've said this, you know, to people close to me and to some people on this show. I don't like, I don't, I, I don't, I don't feel great Um on Thursday nights or Tuesday nights, whatever night we do it, when I'm out, when I'm up here talking about myself. Um, yeah. yeah, Jimmy's jumping in, he's back. He was close with Sonny. Unbelievable. It never ends with you, Mr. DeMonica. Go eat. So, the man, I love him. So, you know, I don't, I don't like, there's something about it that, that hold, I don't hold back. I tell you guys, the way I have to tell you, but sometimes it might seem like I'm taking my time or or being labored in how I talk. Well, I prefer if I'm gonna if I'm gonna talk, I'm, that's how I'm gonna have to do it. I want to do it that way, um, and it's not something I truly, truly, truly enjoy talking about. I don't. I do it because I know the chat likes it. I'd be bullshit. We don't bullshit. The numbers say do it. And quite honestly, what's out there now, what I see outside of, you know, one, you know, unless you're a cooperating cheese eater, there's nobody legitimate 
you know, outside of one person that, um, in my opinion, cracked an egg. You know, and that's okay. I'm, I leave myself open to any, anything you want to, you know, come my way. But we, you know, whatever. That's all good. But again, we do it. We do it. So we got that two nights a week. Tuesday with me, Friday with Jimmy. It's a, it's a lot different, Jimmy. A lot more power. And it's great in a sense because it shows the different levels of things, of things that I was asked to do, things Jimmy will tell you at some point. He did at one point, but then there became a point where he had other people to do them, although... Jimmy was a hands-on guy, and he told you that himself. Jimmy didn't mind getting his hands dirty. Um, you know, so we got that twice a week. We got the Tommy Real Deal has named the security show, um, which I cheated you guys out of Thursday night. I said I was going to tell you a story about a great band um, and a great show, and I got in trouble. Not in trouble, you know. You know they told me I had to relax because I guess I was getting too into the concert. Um, you know, whatever that involves. And I'll tell you what, I feel bad I didn't do it last night. So if you want to stick around, I'll tell you the story right now, if you want. It's Friday night, if you just want to bounce, I get it. We already, we had a lot of fun. But if you want to hear, nothing, it's not an earth shattering. It's just about the, now I can take this off. Jimmy's gone. Don't tell him I took the tie off, okay? If you just want to hear, um, well, you know, a lot of people... Well, you want to save it, the doorman series, or do you want me to tell you a little bit about uh, what I was going to talk about Thursday night? If you guys want to do it, we'll do it now. Otherwise, we'll hold it to Thursday. We got 23 in here. I, I, I mean, thumbs up if you want to go with it. It's about a uh, concert I worked at Cipriani and how I was being told that they were like – rock stars of rock stars back in the day and they were making their return come back together as a group and i was told nothing but they're not going to be good to deal with they're not going to be good to deal with and when i tell you they would have i'll tell you the story i just need one thumbs up give me a thumbs up i'm going to tell you the band and tell you how great they are Thank you, Davey. That's what we're trying to do. And, you know, it's got to be authentic. So, you know, if these are things we did in our life, and that other stuff was, you know, a small portion of really when you look at life in general, there are many things we all don't, you know, did. I was telling Bobby in, um, in comments, you know, Bobby, uh, you know, I'd like for you, you know, email me. I'll give you my number. You call me anytime. Double header. You got it, Nick. Let's do it. Um, I was telling Bobby, my true passion was, you know, when I stopped playing ball, there's some people in here who know I played a little ball. And, it, you know, we, there was a lot of athletes in here. Um, you know, um, you know, look, I don't mind opening up. You know, I open up. I keep it real. You know what I mean? So I came from, look, I, I learned as a young kid. You know, if everybody put their problems in the middle of the room, you'll be more than happy to take yours back. So really what it means is everybody's got a story and, and somebody could always have it worse than you. Absolutely. So I, I grew up in a very, um, you know, I just said, you know, about a couple of people I'm very close with that grew up without their dad. And, um, you know, at young ages, they lost their dad. And um, so how... Now I'm going to com complain about my situation, but I started talking about it. I'll talk about it. I'm an open book. So my mother, birth mother, takes off on us and abandons three boys and another one, which would, I'll explain it. Um, and she just dipped. She left, abandoned her three sons. So I'm young, very young, under two. My middle brother's four. My oldest brother's six. So my father raises, he has three young ones. And um, we had, you know, we had a very strong influence in the house about 
being men and uh, having to defend everything. We weren't allowed to speak about certain things. But I was blessed in a sense that, um, no, not in a sense, that my dad remarried when I was very young. And I, and I got uh, a woman. My father found a special woman that was willing to marry a man with three young boys. And we would find out later there'd be a fourth, but the three young boys and chaos. You know, my father was nights, whatever he worked nights, construction, knock around kind of guy. If you, you understand what I'm saying? And my mother had it tough. I had an older brother that was, you know, you got to remember the older ones knew, knew our biological mother. So they're, they're young. They're thinking where's, you know, they know their mother. So they grow up with all this stuff. Not a cop out, but it, it adds. You don't think uh, you put this shit way in the back of your mind. And then, you know, you find yourself, you know, in your late 20s, 30s, snapping the fuck out and doing crazy things. And, you know, it's not an excuse or a cop out because we weren't allowed to use that. Anyway, we'll get to that another night. So I get to Cipriani. I thought I'd give you a little taste because I know you guys won't let me go. You want to hear more about that. Um, and I'll tell you what, a, 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 not a great person that woman turned out to be. And the woman that's inside right now is the greatest woman ever that raised three boys. Anyway, so I get to Cipriani. Duran Duran is doing a huge comeback uh, return. Now I'm going to admit this. Don't laugh. I couldn't tell nobody back then. Especially um, when Duran Duran was like that hot group. I think we're talking what late eighties, early nineties. I, I don't. I you know we'd have to go back maybe midnight. I don't know. I liked a lot of Duran Duran's music. It wasn't popular to be telling people that though. Not in the athlete crew. Not the tough guy crew. Not in any crew. You, you know, just whatever. Duran Duran, like you know. I liked a lot of their music. I did. Um, so I get to Cipriani and I'm told by a bunch of my guys that I, that I trust, like security guys, not even management. These guys, I know they're going to be a headache. Um, paparazzi was crazy. It was crazy. This was like their first American tour in years. It has to be we're going back 2005. You guys probably be able to look it up. It's probably 2005, maybe six. I don't remember exactly. Cipriani concert series, 60 Wall Street. So um, I'm told headache, headache, headache. Um, and it turns out to be everything but that. They were the coolest bunch of guys. And now I got the ability that particular night. I, um, I did my usual. I was with them on the red carpet. And then for whatever reason, they wanted me to work, be with them in their locker room, a dressing room, green room, whatever we call locker room. I'm thinking football. Sorry, guys. So, Maureen, how are you, my dear? We're talking about Duran Duran here. So, um, yes, and I had to admit to the world that I listened to Duran Duran. I'm never going to hear the end of this. Um, so, I forget who opened for them because all of these main acts always had somebody open for them, even in these private uh, um, concert series. So um, I'm told nightmare, nightmare, red carpet, from the red carpet to their green room. Simon LeBon, who was the lead singer, and they just lost a member of their band. He passed away. Um, I didn't know all their names. You know, it wasn't like a big Duran Duran groupie. I just liked a few. I liked some of their music. Let me tell you something. It's not, it wasn't often when you worked in like the dressing room and then your job is to get them to the stage, you would walk them to the stage. And then I had like double duty that night for whatever reason, I don't know if it was short. And then when they come on, I'm going to be on the stage right in front as they go through their show. Well, not only are these guys like, and they're from England. So it was like, you know, I wasn't, you know, in New York, they, they, they make it fun of the way I talk. They were so down to earth. And Simon LeBon was like a star. Even when they came back and did this reunion tour, 
you could hear the people screaming from downstairs. I told you Sabriani had a double level. So um, the green room was upstairs. So they're asking me the whole time that they're, they think I talk funny from New York, but they're getting a kick out of it. They're asking me to say certain things, not not to forget about it stuff, but whatever. Whatever they're asking me, they're asking me, and I'm laughing at them. They were real people, you know. They, and um, I'm telling them they talk funny, you know, I, not you know, not rudely, but we're joking. But it, it was great. They're, they're feeding me. I'm not supposed to eat. I'm not supposed to ever do that. Media firing. I'm hungry. I just finished another job. I'm hungry. Guys are open to feed me. They get the good stuff. Shrimp. They get every lobster. They get it all. They're feeding me. They're treating me like if I was one of their personal security guys. And believe me, Duran Duran came with their own crew. But they still, the way it worked out, they wanted one of the house guys to be up there with them. So, it's time. You know, I'm hearing, all right, I'm going to take them down. They're getting ready to go. I forget who the opening act was. I'm... I don't know why I'm thinking Lenny Kravitz open for Duran Duran. I could be wrong. You guys might be able to go on to the internet. They might. Look, I told you this two weeks ago. None of these shows seem to be on YouTube. And I told you all the big players that were, I always used to see at these shows weeks and weeks ago. So you got to ask yourself again, I won't go into it. Why is it that nobody thought about putting a camera? Nobody filmed any of these shows. Nobody. But yet they all perform there. It's, pu it's public knowledge. So Duran Duran's time to go down uh, and perform. I believe it was Lenny Kravitz. I don't know why. I just do. I remember hearing like that loud and, and me saying to myself, yeah, I liked Lenny Kravitz, but I thought he only had a couple of hits. What up? I wasn't into it, whatever. And uh, so now that Simon LeBon, the bass player, they, or they had a big uh, big time keyboard guy dyed his hair, like light, light blonde, like this crazy blonde. They're all cool guys. Two backup singers, um, they sang phenomenal. Um, they're always with them, they're still with them. Um, I gotta say it though, I did too, Craig, but you did not let that out. They were a girly band. Absolutely. I can't tell nobody, but you know what? That's all right. That's all right. Now you know it. Now you know it. That's all right. I like Duran Duran. No doubt. So now Duran Duran, we're taking them. I'm taking them. Another guy. And we're not taking them. We they follow us, guys. We know the, the layout. We go down. Um, they come. We go down the elevator, not the stairs. There, Duran Duran. Come up from the back, back of the curtain. I go down the stairs, get my position in the front stage. And um, Simon LeBon, um, the lead singer, um, just a good guy. He didn't have to do it. Like I told you that night, Snoop Dogg stayed for two hours. It was just shaking hands or whatever he stayed for and just stayed around. He didn't have to do it. Simon LeBon is thanking, not me personally, just thanking the Cipriani staff for making them feel good and welcome and not yeah but feeling good about their green room and everything has been class act now is that you know part of the I don't know but I worked a lot of shows nobody ever thanked us before <laughs> I'll be honest with you so they get into their, their their set I think that's what you guys in the music thing call it the set so they open up, whatever they open up with, View to a Kill, they had a lot of hits. I know this is really going to get cringy for you guys. This big, fake, tough guy, you know, uh, like Duran Duran. Um, it's only a couple of songs, guys. I don't want you to think I was a fanboy that had posters all over my room. I didn't. Um, I might have already been married when Duran Duran was out. I don't even know what year they were out. So um, they get into their set. <laughs> um, and I'm noticing... And if any show I ever worked, and I had worked plenty of shows before the Duran Duran, plenty, plenty. And I'm noticing, and I told you, this was to the elite. You had to have money. At first, you had to have an invitation, and you had to have money. And I'm noticing, man, there's a lot of women in here tonight. A lot. Yes, there was the, there was the you know, the big players, of course, the usuals. 
you know, the Mickey Rocks, the Weinsteins, I, I, you know, those, those were regulars. Um, I told you, you know, Dame Dash, you know, the regulars were there. Kamora Lee, I didn't mention her last week, but she's, I thought of it when I saw some things about her on YouTube, and I mentioned Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons was a usual. So they're there, but it's and a lot of women. Duran comes out, Duran Duran comes out, and I'm blown away immediately by they're not lip syncing, and they're actually singing. And I'm I'm like, I'm, I'm telling you, Simon LeBon is, I don't know, five feet behind me. He moved a lot. So in the beginning, he's right behind me. I'm center. Make sure nobody, nobody's going to charge the stage, not in this event. But that's why you're there. And you got about three or four other guys with you flanked off on each side. I can hear them. Sound is amazing. If anything, I, you know, I'm not an engineer, but the music behind was a little light. So you really heard his voice. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. So now they go start to go into their, their hits and their songs. And now the women are getting crazy. Crazy. Now Duran Duran, I don't know. They were they were up there at this point. I mean, they weren't kids no more. Right? They, I, I don't know. We'd have to look it up. You know, how old was Simon LeBon in 2005? He had to be, I'm going to say, late 40s. I'm not saying, that, you know, I'm 57. I'm just saying they, they weren't, you know, kids. Anyway. All right, there you go. So, I don't have to. <laughs> but Simon is doing his thing and the band is tight, whatever you want, whatever they are. I don't know, band, whatever you want to call them. And the women are going nuts. And, you know. The liquor is flowing, and this is a, usually a very calm atmosphere of wealthy people. You know, they just stand there and bop. I made fun of it. I don't remember I said the white people, they just stand there and bop. Anyway, Duran Duran, it's different. You know, this is the kind of group where the lighters are going, and they think they're in Madison Square Garden, and they're waving the lighters. Well, they do They do that signature slow song that they have called, um, I'll never forget it. It was called Come On Done. I'm not going to sing it. Um, I would destroy it. Um, um, although there are some people in here that can tell you I was a karaoke king at one point in my life. Um, but I would destroy that song. Um, so he gets into the song. Goes, they go through that whole thing. And, I mean, they were nonstop for a while, man. It seemed like they were playing forever. Niles Rogers, yep, yep. Um, absolutely. I know that because he was there. That night, you could look it up. Probably you'll see him in the, on the red carpet. So he does this song, Come Undone. And it's kind of a slow song, if I remember. Um, you guys could, whoever likes Duran Duran, look it up. If you know it, you know it. If you don't, take my word for it. It was a big hit of theirs. Um, these, first, the women start with their lighters. And the guy, you got these guys. Now, I got to be honest with you. I was enjoying the concert. First, it was like View to a Kill, uh, Rio. It was a bunch of songs. And I found myself on the stage, not on the stage, you know, in front of the stage. And I guess I was bopping a little bit like the people I was just making fun of. And I had to have somebody tell me in my earpiece, yo, take it easy. You're working. So I guess it might have been more than just that. So, um, yeah, I had to be told to take it easy. Uh, only to find out the next week would be later when I worked Earth, Wind, and Fire. And we'll talk about that. But um, he gets into that song, Come Undone. And these women, they're much younger than Simon LeBond. They weren't, you know, they were young. I, I was probably uh, 38, 39 in those years. In the pictures you see, like with me in that black suit, I'm probably about 38. So Simon LeBond had to be 40, I don't even know, late 40s. And uh, these the, the, the girls there were with these rich guys. You know, they're, I'm guessing, 20s, mid-20s, maybe. I don't even know. They're getting that look, man. They, they're going to – they're coming to the stage. And it's thought. They're starting to throw flowers at Simon LeBon. Now, Simon LeBon was so cool. Like, it's nothing security wants you to do. He does something you don't want secure, you know, security never wants an act to do, especially a guy like this, that the women loved him more than they are worried about the men. The women were nuts for him. Even 
at his age. Um, he comes off the stage and he, now he goes into maybe it's 800 people. That's all these concerts were, 1,000 people tops. Um, and he goes right out and he starts singing to these people that are going nuts. And now they're pulling on him, grabbing him, and they're telling me, yeah, you got to get catch up to him. You got to get close to him. You got to try to get him back to the stage. You know, there's a way to do it. Um, and he's, I get close to him. He's singing. They got everything's going. They're screaming. Now, now I see guys like, I guess I wasn't the only Duran Duran fan that happened to like that tune. And now the guys are like, yeah, I mean, some of them are, you know, you got a question, but, but anyway, the women are going nuts. They're grabbing on him. They're trying to rip at his, his jacket. He had on a tight shirt. They're trying to rip his shirt off. And he's, you know, he's playing into it. He's not, you know, he's, he's playing into it. He's letting them, letting them do what they want. And to be honest, he didn't want, you know, they, they don't want that, you know, as far as something happens, they're liable, whatever, I guess from that point. So it's nonstop. You can't do that. You can't do it. You got to be on him. You got to be on him. Now, again, they got their own security, but they're not even using them. We got them. And he do, he's doing this song, and it, I'm telling you, it was a long song. I remember maybe he did the extended version. By the time he was done, shirt is ripped off him. Um, he's playing into it. I I don't want. I'm not going to get crazy here with graphic. But when I tell you, good evening, Duke. Um, when I tell you, I've never seen so many things thrown on a stage. Um, you could imagine what I'm talking about. Uh, take a guess in your mind what crazy young women are going to do to a young Simon Laban or Billy Idol when he was young. You know, and had these these groups, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was totally. Uh, I enjoyed it. I was uh, I, I I thought the guy was cool as shit to let. Honestly, I thought it was cool as shit that he was telling you know, let him like in the middle of singing. He's like giving us a look, like no, it's good. And we're being told, no, they can't touch him. They can't. And they're ripping his shirt off. I mean, ripping it off. And he's letting them do it. He's playing into it. And they, and he's he is really playing into it. And they are, when I tell you, crazy for this guy. And uh, then he finally jogs back up onto the, to the stage. It's over. They finish with Come Undone. So they think everybody's going nuts. Lights come on. Only group that ever did an encore at the concert series. Lights go back off. They go back crazy again. The women charge the stage. I'm telling you, I don't know how many women were in the house. Every freaking woman seemed like they charged the stage. Now, remember this. There probably was only four or five of us. I know. We're not little guys. They're women. I get it. But you can't just grab women physically throw them aside you're not dealing with men here you're not pushing a man and telling him don't take another step you know there's a way to do it and you we tried to do that you know you put your hands up can't i'm sorry can't let you get in they didn't give a shit they didn't want to hear nothing about nothing and let me tell you the security team i worked with at, at cipriani i i said this before they were one the coolest i never met a bunch of uh Turkish guys that were like one just unit, and I became part of their unit. These were some of the biggest, toughest dudes I have ever met in my life, and I've met some tough guys. Um, first of all, they had heads like concrete. I, I think you would break your hand if you ever hit one of them. That's the truth. And um, it, it was just crazy. Um, we did, we, there wasn't enough of us, and now they come out and do um, – a big, another big hit. They had, they had many. Um, Hungry like a wolf. Whatever it was, they saved it. It was a big song. Now Simon and the band is, we're getting. Look, yeah, we could have controlled it, but we would have had to physically start throwing people. That's the truth. We can't do that though. So Simon sees 
it's it, you know it's it's out of control. It's nuts. It's nuts. Imagine women. It was out of control. We're not dealing with men. We're dealing with women. So how do you do it? You can't tackle them. He's makes it worse. But he was cool about it. Let him let him go. Let him go. Come on. He's telling him run up the stairs. Okay, they're telling us no, no, no. Let him up. When I tell you, there must, I don't know, I didn't count. We couldn't count. Watch, you know, you had so many women on stage, a couple of guys, well, whatever. Um, maybe they like Simon too, you know, um, whatever. Uh, but yeah, it was crazy. And then when it was time for him to, Okay, that's it now. There is no more encores. It, you know, now they want to run with them up to the green room because that's where they go and then they, you know, hang out, sit, and then their cars pick them up and they go. And that's when it, it got a little bit more chaotic. <clears throat> the show was over and they don't want to get off the stage. And now you had to get, not physical, but you had to just be more, um, more, uh, okay, that's enough. You know, time to go. Time to go. And, and now that, that was just a little something I wanted to share about Duran Duran. Not only were they a cool bunch of dudes, they fed us good. They cared about us. They really did. And if you were somebody that paid for that show, and I know those people paid a lot of money, they got their money's worth. They were, they sounded phenomenal. I told you I, I was too into it. And nobody could expect what was going to happen, and they didn't even care. They didn't care. I want you to understand the reason why this was so big is because, like I mentioned, Lenny Kravitz before. A lot of women love Lenny Kravitz. And I worked a lot of, a lot of Bon Jovi. I'll save it. I'll save it. You'll see how some are not friendly like this or um, let people just get loose and, and people feel like they're part of the band and they're dancing with this guy. And I mean, at, you know, Practically a lot more than dancing, but you understand what I mean. And and you'll see, I'll get to some people that just weren't like that, were the total opposites. And we could say all day, I, I, I kept you long enough. I hope you guys enjoyed. I, I wanted to make up because I didn't d didn't keep my word, and I didn't come here Thursday night and do the Doorman series. So, Tommy, real deal, we did the Doorman series for you, buddy. I hope you all have a great weekend. Who knows with me? I think we're good till Monday for boxing. Oh, nobody said what you what, what fight you want to see. Um, if nobody gives me a fight, I'm sure Nick or Bobby or Matt, Davey, OG Ruby. If anybody wants Maureen, anybody uh, anybody wants to give me a fight for Monday night, a classic, just let me know what you want to do. Duke, how are you, my brother? If Nick says, how are you, my brother, I must say that to you. Duke, how are you, my brother? Maureen, we're trying. We're trying. You know what? It's not about trying. It's about just really trying to find out what you guys, you know, besides, you know, you know, um, the street stuff and, and, and everyday life. It could be anything. What is it, you know, that that we can do that we might be able to bring here, um, you know, that to make this show better. We do want to be more of our variety. We don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't think you guys, not about keeping you guessing, but we're going to change it up. I mean, you know, it's only, you know, I don't know. That's just how I feel. But it's about what you guys think. So you guys could let me know. Anytime that that's why the chat is and our, our group is who we are. I think we're special. I know we're special. Duke, you're a Jersey boy. Amazing. Awesome. I had, a lot, a lot, had friends in Jersey. I had a brother lived in Jersey for a long time. Uh, lived in Franklin Park. Uh, Somerset County, I think it was. Franklin Park. Anyway. Um, now, when you say you're a Jersey boy, you're not one of Frankie Valley Jersey boys from from Broadway, you, you, or are you just a Jersey boy? I mean, you're from the other side of the bridge. So when Nick says that,
Wow, I'm really confused. Oh, Trenton Vaughn, I got you. All right, I got you. I used to, um, I used to not, not Trenton, but uh, I used to work. Um, I used to stay in um, the Hyatt on Route One, and it was called um, Hyatt. Um, and if you went further down, as we would go to Sesame Place, we would pass Trenton. Until you get to what that Fairless Hills, I think it is, Pennsylvania. So it was a Hyatt. What the hell was the name of the town? It was a beautiful hotel. We used to, um, Princeton Hyatt, yes. And I worked for the Hyatt for 18 years, so as an engineer. Um, so we had a good deal. We would get um, 12 nights a year, wherever you want to go, you know, if it was only, you know, as an employee free. 50% off all food. So we had a good deal when you had young kids, you know, you go to Sesame Place, hotel and food is a big part of your bill. So it helps. Yeah, absolutely. So I hope you guys enjoy. We're going to try to, you know, if I can get Vietnam vets on here, we're going to get them. Line one, absolutely. We're going to, you know, there's no, no stone we're not going to uncover. I've been getting a lot of people ask me, why don't we talk about politics? Um, I'm not afraid to talk about politics. I just don't know if you guys want to go there. Um, if you do, I'll get more suggestions about it. If you don't, I don't need to talk about politics. Um, but, you know. Um, all right. You got it, Davey T. Vinny Paz versus Greg. Uh, is that, do you mean Greg Haugen? You got it. I think I know you're talking about. You got it. Oh, there we go. Trump 24. Oh boy. Well, you guys know I'm not offensive. Um, oh boy, Maureen says no. Maureen, I love you, you know that. Um, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. With that, guys, love you all. Have a great I'm not running from nothing. We'll handle it Monday. Monday, we got Greg Halgan and Vinny Paz. Maureen, everybody. Thank you for coming in. Bobby, I got to talk to you about some football. Email me. I'll give you my number. Nick, I'm going to call you in a minute. Maureen, Duke, thank you. Um, Andrew Rex, we have nothing but love and respect here. We just keep it that way. If people don't want to talk about certain things, we just move it forward. You know what I mean? We, let's find something we want to talk about. We, uh, you know, everybody's got an opinion. That's all cool. As long as we keep it respectful, that's all that matters. Right? Um. Yes, I am a Trump supporter. I won't run from that. Um, but um, I'm also the same guy that says I only voted once in my life. That's a fact. Some people say I should be ashamed of that. Well, it comes from being raised of being told never to trust politicians. So I'm not going to blame nobody for that. It's my own you know, free will, right? But that's it. Maddie, OG Ruby, you guys are the best. Sheik was a great group. Don't even get me started. We'll do a music night here. These people have no idea. I got a wide range of music I like. It is Osada, my man. Thank you for coming in. Stevie, Jack the Ripper. I hope you get all my comments. Jimmy D, I love you, brother. Bobby, I'm telling you, reach out. Sally Boy, reach out to me. It's in the... Here, take it now. Anybody wants it. Here, I'll put it in here. Anybody ever wants to email me, it should be in the... um. The bio, but I want to put it in the chat right now. I have no problem with, my, with our crew. Shit. Beastie Boys. I never worked one of their shows, Hosa. You know that? Um, oh, wait, I did at the Beacon Theater. I did with Star Watch. Remember Mark Poppy and them? They had that crew. They asked me to work with them. You know, that was really my introduction to uh, security work. Who would know I would do it all those years later? Yeah. I'll never forget working the Bob Dylan concert. That was freaking insane. I'll get to that one day. That was totally insane. But Bobby, yeah, that's my email. Whoever wants to take it. Listen, the only thing I say to people, you email me anytime. I have no problem with giving anybody my phone number. The one thing don't ever call me for is to help you paint the kitchen or move a couch. I'm not the guy. All right. Come on. I don't like to paint and I hate moving couches. You could ask me for anything else. That's pretty good. Just a couch and kitchen. 
All right? You guys have a great night. Love you all. Hope you all had a good time tonight. If we can get any of those likes up, that helps. The chat helps. It's all awesome. We're growing. And um, we're rocking and rolling.